All right, Sylvie, challenge accepted. La Magnifica Sylvie La Chardonnière of the West Kingdom has issued a challenge to all of the cooks, cooking novices, and cooking curious of the known world to try out a recipe. Um, she selected a recipe called Capones, Capons, Capons, in Counties um, from Form of Curry, which is a 14th century English manuscript. Um, I have never made it, so I'm going to take you on this adventure with me. Um, because I'm a little extra, I decided to go ahead and try making this on my fire table in a um, ceramic pot over hot coals. So um, come join me on this very weird journey. All right, so this recipe is in Middle English, which I have to admit is not my jam. Um, in the SCA, I am known as... Talina di Giuseppe da Fiesole. And what I really enjoy looking at is everything related to the last half of the 15th century in Northern Italy. So this is a little bit outside my zone, but we'll give it a try. Um, I have been told that the best thing to do with Middle English is to read it out loud. So we're gonna do that. I wrote down the recipe after kind of getting a little bit of input on what some of the mystery words were. There's still a few mysteries, but Okay, so take capons and roast them right hot that they not be not half enough. Hew them in gobbets and cast them in a pot. Do thereto clean broth, seep them that they be tender. Take bread and the self broth and draw it up together. Take strong powder and saffron and salt and cast thereto. Take iron. I don't know what this word is and seep them hard take out the yolks oh it was eggs and hew the white therein take the pot from the fire and cast the white therein uh, make dishes therewith and lay the yolks whole and flour it with cloves so that's our recipe all right, so let's break this down into steps. Uh, step one is going to be to take the capon, capon, however you say it. Um, I'm going to use chicken instead. Uh, roast it halfway. Okay. Step two is going to be to cut it into pieces. Cool. Put it in a pot with broth um, and cook it until tender. All right. Step three is going to be to take bread and um, mix it together with the broth. Then we're gonna take strong powder, we'll talk about what that is later, uh, saffron and salt, and add it to our bread sauce. Then we're gonna hard boil eggs, we're gonna take the yolks out, we're gonna cut up the whites, um, we're gonna remove our bread sauce from the fire, add the whites to it, and then our final step is that we're going to top our dish with our hard boiled egg yolks and sprinkle it with cloves. Yeah, I had my doubts, but the chicken does look like it is slowly cooking. I've added some lump charcoal um, to my wood because I'm gonna need some long burning coals to do the next stage of cooking. Um, the water is nowhere near boiling, but we got time. Okay, in case you were wondering what it's like to cook in the backyard with chickens, here are the eggs. There is the tiny chicken that laid them. Uh, she is sunbathing. Um, okay, I think we can call that half roasted. Um, so I'm going to take that inside and cut it up into pieces, and then we'll put it into our pot to stew with some clean broth. Okay, my chicken is definitely more than half cooked, but it is definitely not all the way cooked. You can see some pink in there. Um, so I've got my chicken cut up. I'm gonna add some chicken broth from my freezer. Um, this is a very simple broth. It is just, um, was a chicken roasted and then the bones and whatnot, a little bit of celery, and a little bit of carrot. Um, the recipe says to use clean broth, 
there are a lot of recipes that tell you to use fatty broth, so I am kind of taking the leap to think that clean broth is probably indicating something that has been strained, but also um, something that is on the leaner side, so that's what I'm choosing to go with. So we're back out at the fire table. Got my chicken in my uh, ceramic pot. It is up on a little trivet, which keeps it off, um, which allows me to put coals under it. Um, the contents are warm, um, but since I decided to switch pots from the one I was using for uh, my eggs, this one is going to need to be warmed up. The way that you warm up a pot for cooking over a fire is to kind of place it not on top of your coals but kind of near them and then slowly as it comes up to um, a warmer temperature I'm gonna you know feel I'm gonna make sure that the outside of my pot is warming up and um, I'm going to slowly start moving my coals closer in until I have kind of a nice little coal bed underneath because I do want this to do a little bit of a simmer um, so that the chicken can cook to have oh. a fall apart tender. Okay, let's talk spices. Um, so the recipe says to use powder fort, which is um, a like a strong or spicy spice blend. Um, but it doesn't tell us what's in it. So I kind of looked through and I said, well, does anybody tell me? And... Um, the, I could not find the cookbook I was thinking of that in fact has a good recipe. So I went through on medievalcookery.com and I looked at a recipe for a spice mix from uh, Taliban. And so this one is nice because it actually does give amounts. And I had almost everything. Um, so it starts with four parts ginger. I'm going to have to use ground ginger because... That's what I have. Um, three and a half parts cassia, which is a type of cinnamon. Um, this is probably not cassia cinnamon. It might be. Um, I will probably augment that with some ground because I just didn't have very many sticks. Um, two parts nutmeg. Again, I am going to go pre-ground because that's what I have. Um, and then we have, let's see, pepper. And then... And that's one and a half parts. And then one part each, long pepper. Um, these you can usually get from kind of like an Asian market um, or an East Indian type market. Um, cloves. Grains of paradise. Grains of paradise are um, a little bit peppery. They're also a little bit citrusy. Um, they are related to, I think, ginger and cardamom, but they definitely have a different taste. That it is something that unless you live in a big metropolitan area, you probably would have to order. Um, but I do really like them. And um, then Galangal, which is a relative of um, ginger. And um, it is usually available in most Asian markets. Um, you can also buy it pre-ground. So when it is ground, it looks a lot like ginger. Um, you know, if you didn't have that, you could totally just add a little bit of extra ginger and you would be good. So I'm going to take all of these whole spices and I will actually grind them in my mortar and pestle um, to make powder. And um, that is what I will use in my dish. Let's get together the rest of the things for our sauce. So we have some bread. Um, I can't have gluten, so this is actually a gluten-free bread that I baked yesterday. Uh, bread thickened sauces are very common in a lot of the medieval cuisines that we look at. Sometimes they'll be very specific and tell us that we only want the inside of the bread. We only want the crust of the bread. We want to toast it. We want to burn it. We want to use this type of bread. We want to use that type of bread. In this case, they said bread. Um, so I am going in a little bit rustic. I am leaving my pieces with the crust on and calling that good. I don't think it's going to impact the color of my final dish, so I think it's fine. 
Um, we have our strong powder, which is that spice mixture that we put together earlier. We have some saffron. Uh, this little tin was gifted to me. You can also usually find saffron at Trader Joe's. It's pretty inexpensive. And it goes kind of a long ways and it comes in these cute little jars. And of course we have some salt. Okay, let's see what happened with our cute tiny eggs, just so that you know how cute and tiny they are. This is kind of a, a little bit smaller than a regular grocery store egg, and um, these are my tiny eggs. Very, very cute. I have never actually made hard-boiled eggs over an open fire. Let's see if I cooked. No, I did not cook them enough. Wah, wah. Um, I made really nice soft boiled eggs, but uh, they are n the white is not quite set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this one uh, back on the fire and uh, let it cook a little bit more. Um, let's see what this truly looks like. Mm -hmm -hmm. It's so close, but not quite. I'm kind of curious what the yolk looks like, though. You're, you're playing with me here. Oh, so the yolk is cooked, but the white was a little bit under, so that's chill. We are just going to throw that one um, kind of on the coals and just let it cook a little bit more. Okay, after the failure with the first egg, I put that second egg onto the coals just to see what would happen. And so let's find out. And then I boiled another one on the stove. Ah, still a little bit under and kind of burnt. Oh yeah, that's gross. Let's not use that. It's a good thing she makes one of these every day. Let's check on our chicken. It's been kind of simmering away for I have 20, 30 minutes. It is looking pretty fall aparty. It's definitely all the way cooked. Um, so the recipe doesn't specify, but I'm pretty sure that I need to take the chicken out to finish the sauce. So that is what I'm going to do. All right. So I've got my broth. We're going to add our bread. I'm doing kind of a lot. Um, I realized that um, this sounded kind of similar to like an Italian bread soup. And that sounded good. So we're going to give that a kind of a try. So we're going to go for that sort of uh, texture. Um, because later in the recipe it tells us to take this off the fire, we are going to put this back on the fire, um, but my setup is easier inside. So we've got our bread. We're going to need our uh, strong powder. I'm going to do not that much. We'll just stir it up and see what it tastes like. Do a little pinch of sugar. No, salt. Pinch of salt and um, a little pinch of saffron. Uh, I'm going to stir these together and then I'm going to give it a quick little taste just to see what it's like. Um, if I need more spices, more salt. Um, you know, I went a little conservative to begin with. Um, so let's see what this tastes like. I think that should have just a bit more spices. So I think all together I've probably added about a tablespoon of my um, strong spices. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take it back out to the fire table and put it back over the fire and kind of let this cook. I'm going to let this get kind of pudding, kind of like a bread pudding or like a stuffing. Um, hopefully that saffron will kind of open up a little bit and um, give us a little bit of color and we'll see how this goes.
Okay, so we let our bread and broth kind of cook a little bit. It looks like stuffing. We kind of gave this a little bit of a stir. Um, not what I was expecting. Uh, so now we're going to add our chopped up egg white. Um, this is kind of the part of the recipe I am the haziest about. But let's go with it. So I mixed in my white. Maybe this is more rustic than it's meant to be. Who knows? Let's give it a taste. Hmm, okay, tastes good. So it's basically kind of a spiced uh, stuffing. Let's say that's what it meant. I'm super curious to see what everybody else makes, um, like what it, your interpretation ends up being. So I guess I'm just gonna take my chicken and kind of put it in here. And then I apparently am kind of questionable at following directions because <laughs> I cut my egg yolk in half. Um, so it says to flour with clove. I'm going to assume that means sprinkle, and I'm going to guess they don't want me to use whole cloves, which is what I picked up. Um, so I'm going to sprinkle just a, the smallest, teeny, tiniest bit of ground clove over top. Because um, clove is really strong, so I don't want a ton. I think I actually might do just a little pinch of my powder full. And voila, there's my dish.